Hi, I'm Pete Duncanson, Media Arts Pastor, and I'd like to take a moment to say thank you for being here. If you are physically here with us today, please be aware that for your safety, we are practicing social distancing and ask you to respect those that are using precautions as well. If you'd like to know more about what is going on right here at Central, whether upcoming events or just learning about who we are, check us out on the web, Facebook, and yes, we even have an app for that. If the ministry at Central has blessed you and you would like to give, you can do that multiple ways. By using the physical boxes located in the back by the sound booth, through online giving, or even through our app. Thanks again for joining us today, and God bless. Man, good morning, everybody. Great to see you in God's house. A little cool out there. A few flurries about, but not much. Amen. Good to not have to be plowing much snow so far in January. I am thrilled that you are here in the warm house of the Lord this morning. Amen. How many are thankful for heat? You know, I was walking this morning. I got to thinking about how much energy is spent on each of us. What it takes to heat and cool in our lives, the water, the air, what it takes to feed and clothe us. If you're on the 21-day Daniel fast with us, you're thinking a lot about food, aren't you? All the things that you are being denied, all the things that no longer are able to satisfy. Only Jesus is supposed to, right? We're delighted to have those of you join us by live stream this morning as well. Good to have Dr. Paul and Sister Ruth I here with us also. We had a nice time with them last night and we were in for a Great time again this morning. Let me tell you that next Sunday will be Brother Ricky and Sister Kimberly's second anniversary. And we are delighted about, well, it's actually his second anniversary being here with us on the team, but her first and a half. And uh, we're just glad that we'll be able to uh, show them our appreciation next Sunday. And then also those of you who have teenagers, those watching, you have teens on Wednesday nights. We do now have a teen class meeting. Sister Hannah Duncanson has been gracious and stepped in there for us to, to help us get to the next place, and we trust that God is going to do great things there. Why don't you stand with me this morning, and I feel like opening with prayer to get started today, don't you? Father, thank you so much for the power of our God. We're grateful for the love and the grace, but today, in all that we're facing and going through, we are reminded that we have a God that has all power. There is nothing that limits Him, nothing that holds Him back, nothing that restrains Him. God, we come into Your presence thanking You that You have control over everything. We don't have to be tossed with the concerns of this life, the worries of government and politics or media and music. We don't have to be tossed with economics or economics even our own personal situations or emotions, we are held tight by the God who has all power and is in control of all things. Thank you this morning for the opportunity to come into your house and to worship the living God, to worship the God of the resurrection and the God of power. We come here today knowing that we can submit and surrender to you because you have everything in control. We come in here knowing that we can worship you because we no longer have to fear or worry. We can rest in the peace of our God. Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you for salvation and deliverance. Thank you for what you're going to do in this place today. We give you all the praise ahead of time right now in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning here in the house of the Lord. You should have received this morning a magazine, or last night if you were here, one of Dr. Paul I's, the magazine of his ministry. You can follow him online. I don't know if you speak Vietnamese or not, but you can listen to him preaching if you do. And all of those things are available through his website, Vietnamese Outreach International. Uh, the exact website is voi.org. Dr. Paul, is that right? Or what did Paul I? Doctor, Dr. Paul I dot, no, just Paul I dot com. Paul I dot com. I've been on a number of times, but I don't pay attention to the address. All of that's there, and he does much, much ministry right now through outreach online, live streaming to the nations around the world. He shared a lot of that with us last night. He is a good friend of Sister Pam and I. He's also a good friend of us here at Central. 
And we are just thrilled that they were able to make their way up here from Virginia to be with us this morning. They are precious, precious people, uh, saints of God. He shared two um, glimpses last night. Didn't even talk about raising the two dead people he had raised, but uh, who God had raised through him. I know he'd want me to say it that way, but uh, what, what a challenge to us, amen, to see that kind of presence and power of God. He has seen it around the world. Why don't you help me welcome him this morning here to Central Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Paul I. Thank you. Good morning, Vietnam. Well, it's a joy for my wife, Ruth, and I to be back to Central Assembly here in Complain. Thank you, uh, Pastor Doug and Pastor Pam, for your friendship, your partnership. You not only pray for us, but uh, supporting us. And uh, he took me to uh, Tanzania, uh, November 2019. And we saw a lot of great things happen. Uh, last night, I have a privilege to spend time fellowship with many of you here and share with you from my heart through my experience, that how the church be able to multiply like rabbits. And last night, I based on Acts chapter 19 and share with you only two points. Number one, receive Holy Spirit. Number two, make disciples one-on-one. That's what I shared with you last night. This morning, I will use one key verse in the book of Job, and then I will go to Acts chapter 16. So, um, if you can play that, uh, Job chapter 35, verse 9 and 10. This is what happened around the world right now. Job chapter 35, verse 9 and 10. If you don't have a Bible, you can look on the screen. Uh, I think on the screen uh, is NIV. People cry out under a lot of oppression. They plead for the relief from the arm of the powerful. But no one say, where is my God, my maker, my creator, my savior, who gives songs in the night? Last night I shared a little bit of prayer. Last time I was here, I shared with you about three levels of prayer. Pray in outer court, in holy and most holy. But you know, human beings around the world always pray when they have problems. But that's not really a prayer. That's the begging from their gods. And I don't care how long they pray, how many gods they pray. I used to pray 3,366 gods when I was a witch doctor. When I came to church, tried to shut down the church, tried to kick all the missionaries out of my town. I spent three nights, three days, fast pray, spent overnight pray to all those the gods. But let me tell you, friend. I don't care how many gods you pray today around the world. Many religions that still pray to thousands of gods. I don't care how many gods you pray, how many times you pray a day. Some religions pray five times a day, some three times a day with a lot of offering to their gods. But if all those the gods they pray to are dead, and none of one arose from the dead, they cannot help themselves to get out of the grave. How can they help you? But I'm glad today I'm here to share with you that God, we are believe, He is our creator. He is our maker. He is our savior. And He will give you songs in the darkest moment of your life. I don't know what darkness are you facing right now. Some of you, maybe doctor give you a very bad report. Some of you, maybe your spouse left you, your children left you, your parents left you. I don't know what is your darkness. Some of you, maybe your business went bankrupt. I don't know what the darkness moment in your life now. 
But I have a good news for you. If you know there is God, your creator, your maker, your savior, he will give you songs to sing in the darkness moment. Okay? So I will go to show you some picture before I go to Acts chapter 16 for more detail of the message I'm going to share with you. Um, can you go to do the photo? I will draw. Uh, I will go back with you this little bit. That's when I want prison. I go back, but go to the other photo. Um, uh, I will go back with you that uh, when I go to the Mark, um, Act chapter 19. Let's go to the, uh, the following picture after that. Can, can you see them? Okay, this the lady, last night I mentioned that when she was three years old, she was dead. And her parents lived in a very wet jungle they call economic zone. That means a re-education camp. So that means people that have no access to the hospital, the clinic, anything. So when she was treated, this was she told me last month, but I know exactly the story. Though the day, Ruth and I, we go to plenty church, and we try to go to place that people are hopeless, and I have many stories of that. Some of them are in my book, and some of them come on in the next book. So when I come to that village, and I found there is a man he married for 17 years, have no children. So he prayed to all gods, and finally somebody introduced him to Jesus. So he accepted Jesus, so it took him 17 years to get his first son, and the God break the curse. When his son was about eight years old, his family was forced to go to the forced labor camp. And one day his son was dead. It happened the Ruth and I, we were in that village to visit people house to house, like Jesus sent his disciples out. So when I found out that case, and we come and pray for that boy, and then God bring him back to life. So, a few years back, this lady was three years old, and she was found dead, same thing. Or, I don't know what kind of um, fever that's, but very similar to malaria. And though the day, there is no medicine for that. Most of the kids die. So somehow, when her parents cry out very loud, and the neighbor come and check out how she's dead. I said, well, you know what? That boy was brought back to life a few years back. And the man who was a witch doctor is now a preacher. Pray happened in our town, a village right now. Let's go and get him. So that's how they go and fire us and we come. And they wasn't Christian yet. They were non-Christian yet. So we come and pray for them. And thank God that God brought her back to life. And of course, a few weeks later, I was arrested, put in prison, get out, many years in prison, go out. I was kicked to another town. So they did not have any contact with me for a long time. About a few months ago, through my YouTube teaching and sharing, and then share about the story that I don't know well, though the people. Uh, of course, that boy, I found he's now a pastor. Um, he lived in a church in Vietnam. But this lady, I have no idea. Because after that time, move, we move, so we have no contact. But when she heard that story in the YouTube, so she tried to contact church, and she's now a deacon married to an elder of another church, traditional church. But they found out, they found out I'm still alive, so through many contacts, they're able to call me. And she told me a story, she said, Pastor Paul, I don't really know how you look like because when I was three years old and dead. But my parents always mentioned your name everywhere we went. So since that day until now, 36 years already, we travel to, diff move to different town, different village. Now we are in a bigger city. And my friend showed me your YouTube and I watched it and listened. I know exactly that's my story. So I called my dad. And I asked my dad to watch, and he said, yeah, exactly, that's the man. And they said, wow, how come after 40 years, this man looked the same? He looked like not changed anything. Yeah. 
So, so many people mentioned that. And um, well, the reason last night I shared with one of the ladies that uh, I'm turned 71 year old. That's two weeks ago. And look, all my hair is still black, you know. This organic hair, you know. I told you that I never dye my hair because my hair not dying. So, so anyway, we talked with him and then uh, he gave me all the story. So now I disciples this day, I said, okay, now you need to share this testimony. So she starts sharing in her woman group in Vietnam that few weeks ago. So the story was, he, her dad told me, Pastor Paul, at the darkest moment of my family, you come and pray, and God perform miracle, and you taught us how to pray. Now, my whole family are safe. Even that dead girl is now a deacon in a church. So now I'm coaching them how to share testimony to other people. Instead of going to sit in the church and watch the pastor preaching, teaching every week. So this is the story. So it's a dark lit moment that cry out to all other gods. Nothing happened. But when I pray to my maker, to my savior, he answer and bring her back to life. And now after 36 years, 37 years, she doing very well and start serving the Lord. And now they have a song to sing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go to the next slide. That's her, that her dad, that her mom, and that two of her son. So that's the, the picture that they sent me a couple weeks ago. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this guy, he father was a witch doctor. He come to the witchcraft training maybe four or five years after. And then when he graduated from that witchcraft training, he found my story that how come a highest level witch doctor in the town now quicks all the God and come to follow Jesus to become a preacher. So he just heard the story and he just told with his children. But time, year go by, he trained all his four sons. And this is the youngest among the four sons in witchcraft. But then suddenly he dead and Following year, three of his elder brother were dead. And it will be his turn. He know that he's going to die. So his wife really afraid. So whatever meeting she will go, whoever she met, she told the story. So when that happened, she was invited to a Christian birthday and of course, she's very sad. So Kristen asked her, what's going on with you? So she told the story. That she married to a witch doctor, and he dead were dead, and her three elder brothers were dead. And this year, that means 2020, is he turned to die. So that lady in the church said, oh, you know what? I know a witch doctor. The same denomination with his death. But that's which doctor now, a preacher. And he had many messages on YouTube about witchcraft, about deliverance. So she turned on for her to watch that. And she kept watching that message for four times. So she went back home that afternoon. She waited for her husband to come back from work. And this guy, he's an engineer. So he come back and she was excited. So he said, what's going on with you, honey? He said, wow, I have a very good news for you. He said, you know what? The witch doctor that you mentioned, that's your dad, told you he quicks from witchcraft become a preacher. He's still alive. He's not dead. And he preached the gospel. And this is the message here. So she turned all the message I share about delivering from witchcraft. And he kept watching and accept Jesus as the Lord's Savior that's evening before he take a shower and have dinner. So every message I always ended by let people how to pray to accept Jesus. And I give them all the 
instruction for following Christ. Anyway, long story short, last night he was excited. He go through many of my messages in the whole night. Next day, he asked his wife, where did you meet that Christian lady? So she told him, said, let's contact her to find out if this man is still alive. <laughs> so they contact file, and then two days later, we were able to call. So he called me about over two months ago. That's even before Thanksgiving, during that time. So I talked with him a couple of hours. And I said, you know what? God now saved you, set you free. You're not going to die. Of course, we go to be with the Lord one day, but you're not to die according to the curse of witchcraft. You're not dying in 2020. I'm warranty with you that. So he asked me, what to do now? I said, now I want to disciple you. And every night, he get on the first time we talk. Every week, I do three different discipleship training. He attend all. And past two months, he led more than 400 people accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited about that, you know. Hallelujah. And even this pandemic, he has church in his home four nights every week. Because three nights, he brings some more mature. Mature here, I mentioned this means over a month convert. So every three nights, he brings a group of people come and sit with him and learn from me. And other four nights, he teach the other group. Every night, more than 20 of them. So he stuck a church at his home. And actually, the church meet seven nights a week. And it meeting about 20 people there. So the story I want to mention to you that at the darkest moment of his life, he know that Jesus, our maker, our savior, and God give him many songs to sing. Now he and his wife sing. In my teaching in Vietnam, both of them sing a lot. Many times people ask me, Pastor, we want to sing a song to praise the Lord before you teach it. Because God brought them out of darkness moment. And this, this recently story. Okay, let's go to the next story, uh, next uh, picture. Okay, that's he and his wife. And um, that's the first meal after they accept Jesus. And you look at their face totally different. Okay, go to the next uh, photo. Okay, this is another guy. You look, that guy very small. But in Vietnamese, we call them little pepper. You know, pepper very small but spicy. This guy come from North Vietnam as a gangster. Very small side, but a gangster. He ran away from his life from the north to the south. He committed another criminal. He ran away from the south to Malaysia as a worker. Malaysia, he joined another gang. And he became the worst gang in Malaysia. That even Japanese gang, Chinese gang, or uh, Indian gang scared of his gang. So somehow, one day, God brought him to us. We let him do the law, we disciple him, and we marry for him to that girl. And we told him, you better go back to Vietnam, back to your town, and share your testimony. And if you need to go to government, to serve and tell them. So he did everything. And thank God, during the time of pandemic, he meet people every day and tell his story. And he told me at the darkest moment of his life, when he went to Malaysia, he had another big fight. He ran from state to state. And sometimes he's so scared. He went into the nightclub and drank until totally drunk, don't know anything. The owner of the nightclub get a taxi, take him, and put him on the, um, in the mall, in the supermarket. That's how darkness of his life. He don't know what to do. He just want to commit suicide, but he said, no, 
member of this gang cannot commit suicide. But at the dark night moment, he found Jesus. And God not only changed his life. In past nine months, he stuck a church in his home with 37 members. And he had a very little home. And now he's his wife singing every day, praise the Lord. Because how God transformed his life and become a witness for Christ. And under pandemic of lockdown, under communist persecution, stuck a church not easy. But thank God, to the song they sing, his famous song is, this is my story. This is my song. Every gathering, he sing that song first. I believe some of you might have that song in your life. But maybe you not dare to sing to your friends. Let's start to sing though the song that God gave you in your life to be a witness for other people. Okay, next slide. Okay, now you see that's three guy over there. The guy on the roots, left a right hand. That's corner. I met him in prison. His story in my book. He was life sentence prison. Many times he went to commit suicide. And he from the mountain. He not speak properly with me. So I feed him, I teach him, and I let him to the Lord. That's a long story in my book. But anyway, that guy not stay in prison for life. After he know he maker and his savior, God set him free from prison as a miracle. He went to my Bible school for three months. After three months, he go back to his village. In 30 days, he let 753 people into God's kingdom for only 30 days. He was arrested, put in prison again after that. He served another three years in four prisons. With 753 people in five villages left behind, he picked up 12 people and trained them. They take care of them. So when he was three years in prison, that group break into five churches. And later on, they multiply into 10 churches. They put him in four prisons in three years. First prison, six months. Prison become a church. They move him in the next prison. Six months later, become another church. So they keep moving him after three years, four different prisons become four churches. He go back. The group he left behind become ten churches. So now he has 14 churches in three years. And I do his wedding and then stuck two churches through his wedding. One is his wife's village and one his village. Then police chased him. He ran to Hanoi, from the mountain to Hanoi, to capital. People were thinking, what's this mountain boy doing in the, the capital? But less than a year, he stuck another church. They chased him. He ran to Cambodia. So under my leadership, in three years, Cambodia, he stuck two new churches. Police come chase him. He went to Thailand, stuck another church in Thailand. And every time he shared people, he always remind my story, in the darkness moment, if you know your creator, your maker, and your savior, he gives you song to sing. And you know what? Only Christians know how to sing. Other religions, they don't know how to sing. Other religions, they know how to cry. All their songs are sorrow. Have you paid attention to that? All religion. I was in some Muslim country. Five o'clock in the morning, they turn on the big loudspeaker. And they pray and they see that they're all funeral songs. You know why they sing funeral songs? All other religions. Every religion in the world, you will find they sing sad songs like funeral. You know why? Because all their God are dead and still lay behind the grave. Only Christians celebrate our Redeemer live. Our Savior arose from the dead. He the only one left empty tomb behind. That's why we're able to sing happy songs and celebrate 
or resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So the guy next to me, he, story I'm so in my book, long story. He had a nickname called Caesar. He killed people by the Caesar. He was a tailor, by the way. Anyway, he was alive, sent in prison. I met him in prison. Let him do the law. At the darkness moment, he wanted to kill himself. He had no more hope. And he had no friend. And they had to put him in separate cell. Only on Sunday afternoon, because they had a competition in soccer. So he came to watch soccer, and he had to be away. Nobody clothed him three meters. So I come and say, three meters from me. I say, I'm a pastor. I have a good news for you. You are so sad, but I have hope for you today. So I get close to him. Finally, I hug him, and I told him my story, and I let him do the law. I disciple him. He was released from prison at a miracle. He went to law school because he found a lot of injustice in his life. So anyway, long story short, he's now a lawyer for the Christian in Vietnam. And a preacher, become famous preacher. He's more busy than I do because every church wants to hear his story. And now, this guy stand up in front of government and share his testimony that how God changed his life from the darkest moment of his life. Now he can sing. The guy next to me, he's now general superintendent of one denomination in Vietnam. The night he came to see me, he ran for his life. Long hair, long beard. And I let him to the law that night. Following day, I was arrested, put in prison. So he lost my contact. But many years later, he came to Cambodia and looked for me. And then they found that he a general superintendent. And he told the story. At the darkest moment, he ran for his life. And he don't know where to go. He met me in this meeting. And through that meeting, he came to know the Lord Jesus. And God changed his life. Okay. Uh, next one. I think maybe that's, that's enough. We, we go back with the, the Bible, okay, because I have too many stories to tell you, but this one to let you know that's the real story. Now let's go back to the um, uh, Acts chapter 16. I want to look from verse 16 to 34. Acts 16 from verse 16 to 34. Okay, this is a story about Paul and Silas and their prayer warrior. You read the story, talk about their prayer and sing. So one day Paul and Silas went to a prayer meeting. On the way, they met a lady who served a fortune tell him, God. And she followed them and shower. this is a wonderful man of God. And he know that. She tell the truth. But if people believe the truth through fortune teller, later on, they will be deceived. So that's the reason why he cast the demon out of that lady. So now her master found out that he going to lose all benefit from this slave girl. So they excuse them wrong excuse, false accusation, and brought him to the authority. And it was unfair judge. So after they brought him to the jail, they put him in prison. But not only in prison, they put him in an inner cell and fastened their feet in the stock. That means another prison in prison. Okay, you go to, with the picture that how prison in prison. I was in that, so I, I can, no, this normal prison, I was there, but prison in prison, next photo. Okay, this is a prison of prison. When I was put in that prison, and you see that both of my legs were locked, were chained. You cannot lie down, you cannot do anything. There is no toilet there, only one box. That's 
in the evening, the printing, so you use that at night at the toilet. Next morning, they take it out, and they feed you one meal a day, and totally darkness. When I was first time put in the prison, I, on the boat, already get out of Vietnam. And Holy Spirit said, say, Paul, what are you do on this boat? Do you want to be a Jonah? So our friend on that boat said, Brother I, what happened to you? Look at your face. You're like a dead man. I said, I heard the word of the Lord. Wonderful, brother. We are about to make a dangerous journey on the ocean. We need a word from the Lord. What God spoke to you, brother I? I said, the Lord asked me, do I want to be a Jonah on this boat? What? Jonah? Get out of the boat. We don't want to take Jonah with us. So I will kick out of that boat. I get back to the church. One o'clock this morning, I was arrested. When they put me in this cell, I was so sad. One o'clock in the morning, the cell underground, cold, quiet. All my friends are left. I almost complained to the Holy Spirit. I almost asked the Holy Spirit, were you the one who spoke to me? Otherwise, I'm not here. Holy Spirit said, are you still poor? I said, you know that. I did not name myself poor. When I get saved, people told me, Brother I, your life very much like Saul. You are so religious. You persecute the church. And God get hold of your life. It's very much like Saul. And God changed his name from Saul to Paul. You must be Paul. I said, well, any name come up from the Bible must be a good name. Okay, Paul, I'll be fine. But a month later when I read through the Bible, I said, oh, oh, they gave me the wrong name. Paul, this guy, prison after prison. I don't want to be in prison like him. But it's too late to change the name. So I have the name Paul. The Holy Spirit said, but you have me with the name. You want to be an evangelist, are you? Are you? I said, yes. So Holy Spirit, what this Paul and silence react when they were put in prison at midnight. Woo! Conversion come. So I start repent. I start singing. And the song come back to me quickly. That I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The only one with me still will follow. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. So after I sing that song, and suddenly the courage come back. While I was singing, the sound come out. So uh, next door, there was another prisoner there. So he tried to do the most, most to communicate with me. But you know, the wall is very thick, very hard. So I pray. I said, Lord, there's someone in the next door. How can I communicate? And the Holy Spirit told me, put your hand around your mouth. Put on that water pipe that they used to lock his leg and speak slowly so that he able to put his ear on that pipe and he can hear you. So through that pipe, I will communicate with this guy. And it happened, this guy is the top intelligence officer of the capital Saigon the other day. So he asked me what my name, what I'm doing. I told him where my job. He knew exactly where I was. He knew all the leadership of Asia in order there. So he said, Reverend I, since you are here, you have to be ready. Before the dawn, they might take you and I out and then execute it out. And you know, I already have courage. I said, Sir, my Lord said, fear not the one can only kill your body, but fear the one can kill both your spirit and your body and put in hell. He said, who is that one? So I start sharing with him, my maker, my savior. And through that pipe, he come to accept Jesus as the Lord and savior. I can't wait until one day I go over there and see him because he will execute it after that. But he stuck singing the same song that I taught him, I have decided to follow Jesus. And I have many, many stories like that. But now I come back to Acts chapter 16 that you will see here. 
Okay, let's go to the scripture so I can say. So when they start worshiping, they start singing to the Lord Jesus. And, uh, you know, this, I imagine, you know, when they say, I have decided to follow Jesus. And upstairs, Jesus, you know, our Lord is habit present among the worship of his children, right? So when we say, I have decided, so up there, Jesus says, yeah, yes, yes, yes. What happened? The foundation of the prison were destroyed because of the earthquake. When we rejoice, we worship our living God, our maker, our savior, and he enjoys with us, and earthquake happened. Not only that, the prison door flew open. Wow. I am telling you, when I was in prison, I left many different kinds of prisoner, politician prisoner, criminal prisoner, girl prostitute prisoner that I mentioned in my book. In the darkness of moment of their life, I left them to the Lord. When they come to know their maker, their savior, and God give them song to sing. So what happened to Paul and Silas? As they worship in God, the foundation of prison was shaken and all prison door flew open and the chains in the land came loose. Friend, I don't know today if any one of you here listen to me, you are prison, not in the government or a criminal prison, but you're prison in your daily life of many things that you cannot get out. I have a good news for you. If you come to know Jesus as your maker, as your savior, he will go to shake the foundation of your prison. He will go to open the door of the prison. He will go to lose the chain that by your life in the bad habit for many years to be free. And then when do the thing happen, the jailer, in English, say jail, I don't know what American youth officer, correction, whatever in Vietnam, they call the chief police in the prison. So this police officer woke up and he saw all the prison doors are now open and he took the sword one to kill himself. Sometimes he had a position, he had some power, but now he found oh, what happened. The all prison door are now open. He afraid that the prisoner already escaped. He afraid he going to lose his job. He almost killed himself. But let's go to the next verse. But Paul shout, "Don't harm yourself. We are here, friend. If any one of you listen to me today, if you are in the darkness moment, you want to take your life. Don't harm yourself." We are here for you. God save each and every one of us. We are here for those the people in the darkness moments. Don't harm yourself. Because God has a plan for you. You know, in the, the desert, the artists, when they saw the sandstorm come, many times artists tried to hide from sandstorm. And you know what they did? They put their head inside the sand so they don't see the sandstorm coming. But what happened after the sandstorm over? They found that artist dead. A lot of people today, when darkness moment come, they want to take their life because I think they're able to run away from the darkness moment, but end up they get out of this darkness, they go into a worse dark place in hell. That's the reason why I encourage people, if you have a darkness moment in your life, don't think about take your life. Come to Jesus. Come to a church because we are here for you. We have a good news for you. God has a plan for you. He planned not to harm you, but to bless you and to prosper you. 
So he said, don't harm yourself. We are here. So now the jailer called the light and he rushed. And this is something I never saw in my life. You know, I've been to prison for 10 and a half years, a different prison. I met many prison police officers. I never saw one that any police officer kneel down in front of a prisoner. Maybe in America you might see that a couple months ago. But in my life, I never saw any police officer kneel down in front of a prisoner or criminal. But here what happened was, this officer rushed and ran in the front paw and salad and fell down and kneel down in front of him. And he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? I never heard any police, I don't know how many hundred of police officers in though the prison that I went through. I never heard the police look at the prisoner as a sir. Only in some case that I am some pastor. But normally they are really hard on the prisoner. But here they look and say, sir, what must I do to be saved? I'm thankful to the Lord that I have many opportunities to tell the other officer what must do to be saved. So here Paul and Sarah say, believe in the Lord Jesus, you and your household will be saved. So now they have a chance to preach the gospel to the jailer. Let's go to the next one. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the other in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wound. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. Wow. I never see in my life any prisoner were invited into the jailer house to have a party. And not end there. And they were filled with joy because he and his whole house had come to believe in God. Friend, this morning I have only two points with you. Number one, how you can have a song in the night. Recognize your maker, your savior. If you know who your maker, your savior, he gives you songs to sing in the darkness moment. Number two, when you sing to the Lord in the darkness moment, what happened? Miracle happened. Your problem will be solved. People will be saved. And that's what happened in the story of Paul and Silas. We are reading today in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Start from verse 16. So last night I give you two points. Feel with Holy Spirit and disciple one-on-one -on -one with the one you lead to the Lord. This morning I bring to you another two points. Number one, recognize your maker, your savior. And then he will give you a song to sing. And the result of the song, miracle happen. People get saved. It doesn't matter who they are. Even though they are persecuting you, they will say. And I come to the last point. Believe in Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. If you are here today, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus as your maker and your savior. You don't know where you go to spend your eternity. I have a good news for you. Jesus Christ, he's my maker. He's my Savior. I know that He forgives all my sins. And I know that He has a plan for me. 
Because he already been with the Father a plan a place so that he returned to take me to be with him. And every day I have a conversation with him. And he assured me that he already have a place for me. And I will be with him for eternity. So if you don't know for sure if you're able to spend your eternity with Christ, today you can make Jesus as your maker, your savior into your life. And then you have a personal relationship with him. And you can be assured for your eternity. If you never made that decision, you never have that personal relationship with Jesus. Sometimes you already have religion, you do all religion activity, but if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, either your maker and savior, I would like to pray with you so that you know for sure your eternity. Number two, if you hear, you already know for sure of your salvation. You know for sure that you are to be with him for eternity. But how about your family, your loved one, your household? If they are not yet received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you know they are not be able to be in eternity with Jesus. And if you want them to come to Jesus, and I'm here to encourage you, Mark chapter 16, verse 31. Bible very clear. Believe in Jesus Christ. You and your household shall be saved. And how many of you here today, you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior? That's it where you are. Raise your hand. I will pray with you. And number two, if you are here, you know that you are safe. You know that you're going to be with Jesus in eternity. But many of your family member, of your reality, not yet. And you want them to be saved and go to eternity. Because the word of God promised, believe in Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. And if you want your beloved one to be saved, just raise your hand, I want to pray with you. We want to, yes, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, thank you, many of you. Would you mind... After you raise your hand, you want to stand with your beloved one for their salvation, please stand up. If your family already saved, you're okay, sit down. But if you want to stand just for salvation for your beloved one, I want to pray for you now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's make 2021 is your salvation of your beloved one. This is what Bible promised. Okay, would you raise your hand and pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your salvation. Dear Holy Spirit, thank you for your power. Thank you for salvation you've given to me. I am here today. Stand for my beloved one. I cry out for their salvation. Based upon your word, believe in Jesus Christ, I will be saved. And my household will be saved. So here I'm standing for my beloved one. To remind your word and cry out for my beloved one. Save them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can put your hand down now. I want to give you instruction before I go to pray for you. Just stand still. I want to pray for you now. But before I go to pray for you, I give you some instruction. I wish I were tossed in early day of my life. But by the way, all my relatives are safe now. But the other day, I did not know well. But now this is what I want you to do. Some homework. Today, I go home. Take a piece of paper, if you young people, you have your phone, your iPad, whatever, write out the name of the people you want them to be saved. Can you do that? You need to know who they are. And serious, write out their name and every day pray for them. Can you do that? Great. That's number one. Number two, if they stay with you in your house, whenever you have a chance, hug them, just tell them, God loves you, Jesus died for you, 
I love you and I want you to go to heaven with me. That's all. And if they are not allow you to hug them or shake their hand, it's okay. If they stay with you in your house, anointing their door or their bed or their clothes and pray to authority in the name of Jesus, by all other spirits within them that control their life. Set them free from that binding of evil spirit. And Holy Spirit will speak to them when you speak to them. You, ne- you know that you have that authority. In Jesus' name, through the Holy Spirit, you have that authority. Can you do that? If they're not with you, you can have many different ways. With your phone, you can use many apps. What app? You have Viber, you have Jello, you have all many, Facebook, FaceTime, whatever. Or send them a text message. If they don't have those things, make them a phone call. Say the same thing. God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love you. I want you to heaven with me. If they don't have a phone to call, write them a note, a, a postcard. Say the same thing. I did that. The longest friends of mine, it took me for six years. Every year I send him a postcard. God love you. Jesus died for you. I love you when you go heaven. He sent back to me. I keep sending to them. But after six years to the number seven year, his whole family come to Jesus. So we have to do our part and God does he. Amen. Okay, raise your hand. I will pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I lift up my brother and sister who are standing and raise their hand for their beloved one. I come to you, Lord, because you are faithful God. You never lie. And your word assure us that believe in Jesus Christ. I and my household shall be saved. So now, Lord, we based upon your word and based the faith of our brother and sister who are standing and raise their hand for their beloved one. I take authority in the name of Jesus. I command all the evil spirit get out from the life of their beloved one in the name of Jesus. I declare that Jesus, when you die on the cross, you already fulfill salvation for them. Now, I pray for our brother and sister as they open their mouth and speak the word of God, the word of love into the life. Holy Spirit, open their spirits. They're able to receive it. And from their spirit, they command to their soul, to their body, to follow and accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I commit our brother and sister into your hand. And Lord, we give all glory to you, Lord. And I pray that our brother and sister will be bonus to share their testimony to bring more people into your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated.